The following is a special Wayne Hills Television Sports Presentation. Hello and welcome to Hackensack High School, where the Hackensack comments are playing your Wayne Hills Patriots. Alongside Jason Hook, I am Noah Sandler as we bring you this matchup here on Wayne Hills TV. Entering into tonight, both of these teams are 2-2 two and two on the year, so it's going to be a tight competition tonight with two pretty evenly matched teams. Last week, Hills lost a tough one against Wayne Valley, but they are looking to bounce back this week. Speaking of their schedule, let's take a look at that. They are 2-2 two and two on the year, as I said. They won their first game in Tennessee, lost against Ramapo, had a nice win on senior night, and then lost in that game last week against Wayne Valley in that rivalry game. And now let's take a look at our key players for tonight's game. So my key player is John Sees, the senior, the running back. Um, he's been great all season, 372 rush yards, 40 carries, three touchdowns, and he did have an 82-yard rush out in Tennessee. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of him. What about you, Jason? My key player is Tyler Demikoff, the quarterback. 540 passing yards, uh, good for four passing touchdowns. Very impressive stuff. And on the running game, he's got 67 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. So, you know, really great player. A guy you really want running your offense, and I'm expecting a lot from him today. Yeah, this is a run-heavy offense, as we've seen all season long. Sees is one of the top players on this team, and Demikoff um, has really been handing it off to him a lot. And now let's take a look at a scouting report on Hackensack. Oh, Hackensack is 2-2, two and two, as I said, on the year. Uh, their head coach is Brett Ressler in his first year as the head coach. They are fifth in the Liberty Red Division in the SFC, and when they're playing against those divisional opponents, they are 0-2. And, and their starting quarterback is Matt Polores, number 16. He has two passing touchdowns, 260 pass yards, and only one interception. So it's going to be a tight matchup in tonight's game, but we're looking forward to a good one. And before we wrap up our pregame show today, I had a chance to speak with John Sees to discuss tonight's game. This is In the Huddle. Welcome to In the Huddle. This week, I am pleased to be joined by senior running back number 22, John Sees. So, John, you've really improved as a player over your four years on the team. What have you done to get to the level you're playing at this year? Really just working hard in practice, you know, bonding with my teammates to make sure that we have a, a good team for the, the rest of the year. And you guys bounce back after a tough loss in the first week um, against Ramapo, and then you're looking to bounce back again this week after last week's loss against Valley. How do you guys hope to do that? We just have been working really hard in practice, you know. We have to come together as a team after losses like that. Tough, it's a tough loss, you know, but we can bounce back if we just work together as a team, pick each other up, and keep it positive. And you get to uh, share the field and work with uh, sophomore Johnny Mangelli. What is it like to work with him, and how do you hope you could help him as a player, and how do you hope uh, he could help you? Working with him is really, like, a, it's a blessing because he is, he is he's just as good as me. He's two years younger than me. And if anything, he's he's better than me. Like watching him play helps me so much. Learning like how to hit holes differently, how just how to run the ball in a different way. It's really helpful to have him there. It's really just it's amazing. We we, we kind of work with each other, and it's it's a it's really a good experience. Well, thanks so much for joining me, and good luck tonight. Now let's send it to the locker room for the pregame messages from Coach Demikoff. We stand for what's on your chest. We do. Ain't none of us quit yet. None of us quit yet. You've got to stand with us. We've asked you for toughness. Have we coached you hard? Let's coach. Now it's time to play hard. Stand with us. All of us together, you can't be beat. You can't be beat if all of us are on the same page doing the same thing. We've got to start tonight, guys. The worst thing in life is wasted talent. The worst thing in life is wasted talent. This is a talented team. Now you gotta be a tough team. Go out there and play Wayne Hills football for the first time this year. Knock people down and get excited about it. Be clear? Oh, 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 Hills up three. One, two, three. Oh. Now, welcome back to Hackensack High School, where the Hackensack Comets are playing your Wayne Hills Patriots again. 
I am Noah Sandler alongside Jason Hook for tonight's matchup. So, Jason, what are your thoughts on tonight's game? I mean, you know, they've had their struggles all season long, you know, mostly, you know, on the defensive end, letting up a lot of scores. You know, look at the Ramapo game, look at the Valley game. Their main thing is going to be getting those tackles on the defensive end. You know, they got to be really aggressive out the gate. You know, on the defensive end, they're going to have to get in front of their man. They're going to have to get those tackles. And I think this is a game that they can definitely win. Yeah, I mean, as you heard, the message in the locker room was tackling, was blocking, and that's something that's really been the theme of what they've been working on in practice throughout the season. That If you're not going to tackle, if you're not going to block, you're not going to win the game, and that's really what football's all about. So now we see the captains out there on the field for the coin toss as we get ready to go here at Tom Delatorre Field at Hackensack High School. These two teams don't really see each other much. The last time these teams saw each other was back on November 16, 2012, when Hills beat them 35-0. They've only seen each other three times, um, with Hills winning all three of those games. In 2012, Hills won 35-0. In 2011, Hills won 30-7. And in 2010, Hills won 34-0. So in this series between these two schools, I mean, it's been 10 years, but... Hills has won all three of those games. And we're getting Wayne set Hills to go. Won the toss. They to the second half. Hills won the and toss the and Comets will receive the ball to begin the game. Hills is going to defer to begin this game. Out for the kick is going to be Adam Kachani. And back to return for Hackensack. We're going to see Eric Afrifa and number seven, Aiden Jones. Jones is the star player on this team. He's a running back, and we're going to talk about him more throughout the night. Both teams are set, the refs are set, we're set. Let's get this game underway. And the kick is off. Back to return is Afrafa, and he's gonna make it to the 25 where the ball is fumbled. And returned and picked up by this Hills team. And the ball looks to be recovered by Wayne Hills. It will be Wayne Hills football on the first play of the game. Hills. That is how you start a game. In, a, in an amazing way to start things off. I mean, Agassiz couldn't even get a play in off the kick return. Amazing job by the team. We said tackling is one of the most important things here. Hard enough tackle, you're going to make the other team fumble. And getting that ball back early on. Only 10 seconds into the game. This is a great way to start things off. So they're going to start with the ball at the 22-yard line. Excuse me, it'll be the 27-yard line, but a flag is down on the field. The refs will discuss. It was against the defense. But it looks like they're backing up, so it seems like there might be some confusion about what what the call was. Yep. Illegal substitution on Hackensack. It was an illegal substitution first and on Hackensack. It'll be first and five from the 22 now. This team, this Hills team, looking to start out strong, and what better to what better way to do it than to recover the fumble on the first play of the game? So now Demikoff. Early in the game, hands the ball off. That is John C's on the carry. And he is taken down at the one yard line. Ball carried by Nice John play C's. by the senior running back, John C's. Down inside the one yard line. And that is your key player First for today. Goal, no, John C's, an amazing player. 
uses his speed to his advantage. I mean, great way, change of direction, nice footwork, able to get past each and every defender coming his way, and a great way to start things off on the first drive. And now first and goal from the one-yard line. Ball handed off the seas again, but he's met abruptly at the one where he's taken down, second down. Giovanni Moore with a huge tackle in the backfield, stuffing the runner sees second and goal. So now second down. Looks like he did lose a yard on that play. It'll be second and two. Ball handed off to Seas again, and he's able to make it into the end zone for the touchdown on the third play of the game. Hills is already on the board. And right away, we see a lot of what Coach Demikoff was talking about in that locker room. You know, on that kickoff, you know, they got the tackling down, able to force that fumble. And now, on this drive, the blocking was down very well. I mean, able to get that running through the offensive line. Great job by this Hills team on the blocking end. John Seas does it again. A great running back for this team and a great way to start off the game. Yeah, they really just opened up the hole on that, on that play and Seas able to find his way through. Out there for an extra point now is the kicker, Adam Kachani. And the point is good. Point is good. We have an early 7-0 game here at Hackensack High School. And the Waynos Patriots looking very smart right now, choosing to defer their kick return to the second half as they were able to get the ball right off the kick return after forcing the fumble. And now starting off strong with the score, they will also get the ball starting off the second half. So right now, it's looking like a great choice by the Wayne Hills Patriots team. Yeah, and that it's really like they're going to get the ball twice to start each half. So it's really great to see they're bringing that aggression from the start. I mean, we saw this after that game against Rempo. They came out um, in that North Bergen game with, with the bang, kind of. Back to return again is going to be Afrifa and Jones. Kachani averaging about 55 yards per kickoff, which is really great to see. He's got a great leg. And that is a line drive of a kick, and it's going to be returned by Afrifa. And he'll get it to the 20. And he is met and taken down at the 25-yard line. That was that Joe Lucarello on the tackle. To about the 27-yard line. Now let's meet your Hills defense. Makai Gray, PS number 20. John Sees, Albert Payson Trian. Johnny Mangelli, James Fallon Elementary School. Nick Hogan, James Fallon. Adam Kuchani, John F. Kennedy Elementary School. Josh Beck, Tuna Stott. Emmanuel Dankla, 16th Avenue, Elmwood Park. Michael Furnicola, James Fallon Elementary. AJ Anzaldi, V. Tuna Stott Elementary. Guy Giordano, Tuna Stott Elementary. Joseph Cucarella, Pines Lake Elementary. And now Polaris hands that ball off to Aiden Jones, and Aiden Jones is really the star player of this game. He has 585 rushing yards, 55 rush attempts, and seven touchdowns, with his longest rush being 60 yards, so he is going to be the guy that seems to be their go-to, and Hills is gonna to wanna to look to stop. And now, second down and, and eight, after that nice stop there by Lucarello. Ball handed off to Jones again. And that was a trick play. Polaris takes it out wide. They got me tricked up on that one. He'll make it to the 50 yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. All the way out near midfield, quarterback keeper. It's a comment, first down. And so far, Hackensack, a uh, very similar playbook uh, offensively to Wayne Hills, you know, emphasizing that running play, two back-to-back -back runs. Matt Polaris, a great line. job on the play action, took it for himself and some great yardage from him there. 18-yard run. So, ball at the 50-yard line. 
They have three receivers out now. Some motion in the back. And that ball is handed off this time to Aiden King, but he's quickly met by Fernicola and company and taken down. Just a gain of two on that play. Ball carried by King. He picks up two. Second and eight. Three receivers out again, two to the left, one to the right. Ball handed off to Jones, and he's able to make it for a nice gain on that play, short of the first down, but that was a six-yard gain. It'll bring up a third and two. It's third and two from the 42. Ball placed at the 42-yard line. Big third down here. Hill's looking for a stop. Miscommunication on the defense there. And it'll be quarterback sneak, runs it through. Gain of four on that play. Gain of four. It'll be first a first down. down for Hackensack. So now first and 10, handed off to Jones again. Jones looking for an open hole, able to find one, but only a gain Jones of two on that play. The -yard line. So Fernicola Second is eight. really leading this, this, uh, this uh, stop on the defensive line. That he did, Noah, that he did. All right, now it is second and eight. Motion in the back, quarterback keeper, and Polaris able to find an open lane out wide to the left where he's finally knocked out of bounds by Emmanuel Denkwa, the senior. Won't be enough for the first down, but a nice gain on that play. But there is a flag down on the field awaiting the call from the ref. Uh, and that ball came back. So it'll bring up a second, a a second down and four. It was holding on Hackensack. Second and about 14. And Polaris looks to pass downfield. And that is off the back of John C's pass intended there for Adrian King. And the two running backs for Wayne Hills High School also playing defensive back, Johnny Mongelli and John C's, both there, uh, you know, off the back of C's. Mongelli was, you know, running right towards that ball. Unfortunately, I mean, first passing play for Hackensack doesn't really go their way. Rushing game has Third been great so far from them, for but the passing game. Uh, yeah, it's something they got to work on. Yeah, both these teams with a run-heavy offense. Hills with Cesar Mongelli and Hackensack with Jones. So now third and long. Motion from Blake. Now Polaris looks to pass again. And that is broken up there on that play. The Almost intercepted the there complete. by Makai Gray. So that'll bring up fourth down. Punt unit will come out on the field. And Makai Gray just got his fingertips on the ball so close to getting that interception. I mean, you know, things will go Wayne Under Hills' way as Thomas. Hackensack will punt the ball, but so close to Makai Gray, almost had that interception there. Uh, 
And that punt is up. And back to return is going to be Makai Gray, but that was short. The punt is down at the 15 yard line and that's where Wayne Hills will take over with a seven nothing lead with 7.08 to go in the opening quarter. And now let's meet the Hills offense. Michael Fernicola, James Fallon Elementary. Makai Gray, PS number 20. Tyler Demikoff, School 16 Elementary, Clifton, New Jersey. Nick Hogan, James Fallon. Tommy Kick, Tunis Day Elementary. Ramsey Kubovsik, Albert Payson, Turkey. Guy Giordano, Tunis Day Elementary. Chris Romano, Tunis Day Elementary. John Sees, Albert Payson, Turkey. Adam Kuchani, John F. Kennedy Elementary. Nicholas Turbovich, James Fallon Elementary School. Gain of seven on that play. Picks up seven. So it'll bring up a second and three. And a great job by John Sees using that footwork. You know, a nice spin move there, able to get through that defensive line from Hackensack. And a great way to get a gain of seven. And now ball handed off again to Sees, but he is quickly met and taken down on the tackle there was number 28. Dylan Thornton, the sophomore. So now it'll be third down. Bennett with a great tackle in the backfield, losing yards. It's third down and six. Excuse me, that was Barrington Bennett, the junior, on the tackle, the defensive back. Now Demikoff drops back, looks to pass, feels the pressure, and he completes the pass, but he's quickly met and taken down. Pass is complete, short of the first down. Pass was complete to John Sees. Tackle by Soa. So, two. it'll be fourth and two. And the punting unit comes on for Wayne Hills. Three punt, and out. Punt unit out on the field. That was a nice punt there. And it'll be down at the 48 yard line where the offense will come out onto the field. With 5.03 to go in the opening quarter. So Polaris and the offense out on the field. I believe he only has two pass attempts. They've really been looking to run it in this game. Ball handed off to Jones. Jones able to find an open hole. And he'll make it to the 40. And he's finally taken down at the 30 yard line by Guy Giordano. They're actually gonna spot it at the 25. Inside the 30, down to about the 26 yard line. And Aiden Jones, no doubt, one of the key players for this hack and sack team, coming into the game with over 500 rushing down. yards on the season. Great all-around player as the running back. You know, he's been great for this team. So now it'll be first down and 10. Ball handed off to Jones. But Jones unable to make it too far on that play as he's quickly met by the defensive line. One. Tackled there by Mike Fernicola and Emmanuel Dankwa. Fernicola all over this game so far. Now, second down and 10. Ball handed off. This time, it was to Jake Borchard. Jake Borchard up the middle, no the game. The senior. 
It's third and nine. That'll bring up a third and nine. Now Plouris spins out, looks to pass, and they're going to call him out of bounds. Pass is incomplete. Pass was incomplete on that play, intended it's for Eric Afrifa. On the 25 yard line. And a great rollout uh, from Plouris. I mean, that spin move, able to go. He is a lefty, so you know, moving to his left side with the spin move, able to find the open man. Very unfortunate, couldn't stay in balance on the catch, but a great job rolling out by Polaris. 2.56 to go in the first quarter. It looks like they're gonna go for it on fourth down. Polaris drops back to pass, and he's taken down. Sack there by Mike Fernicola. Now the now offense will come out on the field down. and will get the ball at the 35 yard line. Nice play. And Fernicola, you know, a D1 athlete, able to get through that offensive line. You know, it's so easy for him, able to get through there, able to get the sack. An amazing job by the entire defensive line, able to get through there. I believe three players ended up getting to the quarterback, Polaris, for the sack. Mike Fernicola, obviously credited getting there first, and a great job by the Hills defense. Ball handed off to Cease. Cease looking for an open hole. Only able to get a gain of about four on that play. It'll bring up second down. Picks up four, second and six. Second down and six. Ball handed off again. Here's C's. C's looking for the open hole. And taken down just short of the first down. Ball carried by C. It'll bring up a third it's down and third one. Third and one for Wayne Hills from the 43. Handed off again to Seas, but he's met by number Seize 13, Jay Anderson. Short, it looks like. And it's going to bring up fourth and inches. It's going to be fourth and less than one. Just short on that play. It is fourth down. Offense staying out on the field. Coming in now is. Joe Lucarello for Tay Shim. See what they decide to do on this play. Handed off the C's again. He's met and taken down, but able to get the first down. And that is enough for Wayne Hill's first down. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter. And the Patriots once again utilizing that rush offense. John Seas able to get up the middle through that defensive line from Hackensack. Great job diving through, getting that first down. Now first and 10. Ball handed off to Seas again. Seas gets out to the Seas all over this game, game. getting a lot of action. Injury on the play. And there's an injury, injured player. Down is number 44, Ethan Maya. The 
Did you see what happened on the play? I wasn't able to see. I do believe he did get caught up with another defensive line player, you know, pushing through. He is on the defensive line. That is Ethan Mejia, the junior. So, you know, trying to get through that offensive line of the Wayne Hills Patriots did have a collision. Unfortunately, it does look like it is in his leg, and unfortunately, he is in a lot of pain. Very, you know, unfortunate to see an injury on the field. And it looks like they're going to help him get up. He's going to limp off the field with some help from the medical team. Great to see. So now second and six. Hills using that opportunity to have a little bit of a timeout and regroup as a team. As the clock is winding down in the first quarter, they are just gonna let this run down and then they're gonna switch ends. And that is the end of the first quarter. With the score, Wayne Hill 7, Hagensack 0. So speaking of injuries, four hills out tonight is Matt Quagliana as he got hurt in last week's game. Um, he hurt his ankle. Unsure if he will be back before the end of the season, but they did say he would be out for at least a couple of weeks. So hopefully he can heal up that ankle and get back on the field as soon as possible. And Quagliana has had a great season so far. I mean, he's leading the team in receiving yards, you know, a couple great receptions uh, throughout the season so far. So, you know, really unfortunate to see that he's injured. Hopefully he can come back at some point in the season because he really is one of the key players for this Hills team. So the offense will have a second and six. Ball at the 50 yard line. Now Demikoff rolls out to the left, looks to pass a nice block there by Season. He'll take it for himself on the keeper and that'll be good for the first down. Corner by keeper by Demikoff. And Tyler Demikoff loves those keepers. I mean, we've seen him That's with a ton of Wayne Hills, Hills quarterbacks. Uh, last year we saw it with Jarena. The year before we saw it with Noah Abita. They love running the ball for themselves, able to get those play action plays off, able to take it for themselves and a great job by Tyler Demikoff getting that first down. Now, first and 10. Low snap, able to handle it, hand it off to Seas with the nice spin move, but he's Seas taken one. down at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine from the Hackensack 41. And now that ball handed off to Seas again. Seas looking for the open hall, and he finds one. And that is a gain of five on that play. Ball carried by Sears. He picks up about five. It's third and five. Now third down, Demikoff drops back, looks to pass, has time, rolls out to the right, and he completes the pass to Emmanuel Dankwa. Pass is ruled incomplete. But they're gonna call that incomplete. Yeah, it did look like Emmanuel Dankwa did have the uh, possession of the ball, unfortunately couldn't get uh, you know the step or two in to fourth be registered as six. a catch. Hill is able to jump on it, thinking it was a fumble, was ruled an incomplete pass, so they are gonna go back to where they started. It'll be fourth down. It seems like 
Coach Demikov is deciding to go for it. Let's see what kind of play they're deciding to do here on this fourth and six. Another pass play, Demikov with time and a high pass, able to complete it to Makai Gray. That'll be well for enough for the first down. Hills. A nice pass there by Demikov. And something you notice with, uh, you know, watching a bit of Makai Gray's game, you know, he's a high jumper, able to get to those passes. You know, we saw a very similar play um, in the first, first game of the season in Tennessee. Uh, you know, he had a jumping pass, just able to get over the defender. And that footwork is amazing, able to get the spin move and diving just to make sure he did get that first down. So now first and 10. Ball handed off the seas. Pushing his Sears way through the defensive the line before he is taken down. That is a gain of four on that play. About four. Second and six. Now on second and six. Ball is handed off to Sees. Sees finds an open hole. Sears again gets enough for a Wayne Hills first And down. that is good for the first down. Down to about the 13 yard line. Now inside the red zone, Hills with a first down. Hand it off again to Cease. Plunging Sears through the, the D's line. Flag on the play. And there's a flag down on the field. Let's see what the call is. Looks like it'll be it's coming back. It was a holding against the Patriots. Ten yard penalty. So now it'll be first and about 16. This time ball handed off to Mongelli. Mongelli out to the right. And there's an there's three flags that all come flying in. Okay, Mongelli. As Mongelli gets knocked out of bounds. Another flag on the play. It was a face mask foul, penalty, face mask penalty on the defense. So it'll bring up first and goal. From the seven yard line. So now on first down. That ball handed off to Mongelli. And he is quickly taken down. The Looks like it'll be just short You're of the short. first down. Second and one. It'll be second and one. Ball from the five. Handed off to Mongelli again. Plunging through the defense, second opportunity. Mongelli up the middle. 
They're going to mark him just short. They're going to mark him just short. Looked like he made it into the end zone, but his knee must have been down early. So it'll be first and goal from the one. Handed off again to Mongelli. And touchdown, and Patriots. Touchdown, Wayne Hills. Nice play there by Johnny Mongelli, the sophomore, to push his way through the defensive line and get the touchdown. And Mongelli, only being a sophomore, has really been a spark plug player for this team. I mean, came in here, you know, not really expecting a sophomore to get much playing time, but behind John C's. He's gotten a lot of playing time at the running back position and does a great job scoring that touchdown. It'll be Kachani out there for the extra point. The point extra is point good. Is so we have it's a 14 nothing game here at Hill. Tom Delator Field at Hill. Hackensack High School. And uh, Johnny Mangelli on that play, he's really one of the star players for this team. As you heard John C's talk about in the pregame interview, um, they're two guys who are really learning from each other and improving by the day. And there's an injured player down on the field. It'll be Tommy Kick, number 73, the junior. Looks like they're going to be able to help him off. So we'll see who comes in to replace him, but it'll likely be either Johnny Grant or Lucas Rickey. So in a 14-0 game, it'll be Kachani to kick it off yet again. Back to return is Afrifa and Jones. And the kick is up. Nice kick there. And it'll be returned for a nice gain. And Kachani trying to take him down on the return there. Was number, I believe that was number 28, Dylan Thornton. Actually, that was number 29, whom we don't have the number four on our roster. That was number 29, Hebert Tejada, the junior for Hackensack Comets. A great, great, great kick. 
Great quick return by Tejada, able to get that stiff arm down, nice footwork, able to get some nice yardage on the kick return. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Hackensack. That was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Hackensack. The ball will be moved back. It'll be a 15 yard penalty. So now they're gonna get the ball at their own 41 yard line. Originally it was down at the 44, but now it's at their own 41. So Polaris in the offense out on the field. Now that ball handed off to Jones, and Jones is quickly taken down by Emmanuel Danqua for a nice field. tackle. And we've said it throughout the game, tackling is the most important thing that this Patriots team has to get down. Emmanuel Danqua, amazing Second job shedding the blocks from the offensive line. It will get to the running back, Aiden Jones, and the tackle for loss there. Great job by Danqua getting through that offensive line and making the tackle. Less than seven minutes to go in the second quarter. It'll be second down and 13. And flag is thrown. I believe it'll be offsides on the defense. False start penalty against Hackensack. But they are gonna call it a false start. It did look like Hills jumped first on that play, but the ref saw otherwise. And Hackensack, after such a great kick return, unfortunate that, you know, two straight penalties along with the tackle for loss. I mean, really unfortunate for the Comets here. You know, they started off so well on the drive, now being pushed back to second and very long here. It's going to be tough for them to get the first down. Yeah, now they're all the way back. They're going to have the ball at the 32-yard line when they were originally down at Hills is 44 on that return. But an unfortunate series of events here. Second and 20. Now Polaris drops back, looks to pass, feeling the pressure, rolls out to the left. And he just has to throw it away as the pressure was onto him from Darian King incomplete. and Mike Fornicola. It's third down and 20. So it'll bring up third and 20. All right, and on third down, Polaris drops back the pass, completes the pass out to the left. Pass was completed there to Sean Sawa, but gain of 10 on that play, but still 10 to go, and that'll bring so up Hackensack fourth down, fourth about nine and the punt unit will come out on the field. On their own 42-yard line. And an unfortunate turn of events for the comments, starting off so well on the kick return. Lost a lot of yardage. Interesting choice to uh, run the screen pass on fourth and on third and long, but you know puts the Wayne House Patriots in great position. And now back to return. The punt is going to be Gray. Nice snap. Almost blocked there by Danqua. And it'll be downed all the way at the 18-yard line, where Tyler Demikoff and the offense will come back out on the field with just over five minutes to go in the second quarter.
Demikoff hands the ball off and quickly met by the defensive line. No gain on first down. That was Johnny Mongelli on the carry. No gain on that play. Second and 10. Three receivers out to the left, one out to the right. Now Demikoff with time looks to pass and he completes the pass to Mongelli. Mongelli looking for an open hole, he finds one and he will take it all the way to the 40 where he is pushed out of bounds. A nice catch there by Mongelli, the running back. Now Johnny Mongelli, obviously, you know, the running back, he's in the backfield, but on those receptions, you know, he's really good at catching the ball immediately taking off. You know, he's been great. Really the number one choice when it comes to, you know, throwing the ball to the running back. Uh, so he's been a, done a great job. You know, once he gets the ball, he just takes off, and you saw it there, able to get the first down and a nice pickup of yardage. Yeah, great all-around player with that speed. Ball handed off again to Mongelli. Mongelli finds an open hole, and he'll take it to the 40, and he's finally taken down at the 35-yard line. Another nice gain on that play by Mongelli. He's really That's proved to be a bright spot in the future of this Wayne team. Only a sophomore. And now first down, ball handed off again, but gain of about five on that play for John Sees. Run up the middle by Sees, gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Ball handed off again by, to Seas, but he's quickly met and taken down. On the tackle there was number nine, Moore, Giovanni the Mora. The but there is a flag down on the field. Looked like Makai Gray was not happy about something. It'll be against Hills. It'll be third down and 12. Now the refs are going to discuss it with Coach Wrestler of Hackensack. There is a penalty against Hackensack, personal foul accompanied with an ejection. And number four, Sean Suwa from Hackensack has Sean been e ejected. And now they're gonna move the ball again. Some confusion there on what the penalties were. It'll be an automatic first down now Demikoff and the offense will have the ball at the 23 yard line with a first down and two and a half minutes to go just outside the red zone. Now ball handed off to Seas. So on first and 10, they pick up three after the penalty. Picking up three on that play. It's turning into a little bit of a scrappy game. Both these teams are kind of going at each other. Now about two minutes to go.
Ball handed off again to Cease with the spin move. Another but handoff up the middle. Only able to get a gain of one on that play. It'll bring up a big third down opportunity here. That was Seas again. As the clock is running. It's third and six. It'll be third and six. Now Demikoff drops back, looks to pass. There's a high pass Pass just over the head of Makai Gray. And quarterback Tyler Demikoff looking for something big there. I mean, third and about five, you know, throwing the ball is, you know, not really something they would traditionally do, but going for the touchdown, trying to put them up even bigger than they are right now going into the second half. Unfortunately, couldn't get it there. Fourth and a long five, they're going to stay on. Offense will stay out on the field. Two extra receivers just came on. Shim and Giordano, along with Denkwa and Gray. So fourth and five. And timeout has been called by Hills. They're gonna wanna talk this one over. Timeout Wayne Hills. You think it's the right thing to do here to go for it on fourth down? I mean, there's really not much to lose. I mean, just over a minute left to go in the half. They do receive the ball at the second half. So, I mean, you know, definitely not out of the realm of possibility here for Wayne Hills. I mean, they could go for the field, go keep it easy, put themselves up possibly 17-0, but going for it here, possibly getting the touchdown on this play or on a future play here in the first half, I mean, it's definitely a smart idea here, putting them up big going into the second half. Yeah. So now both these teams have talked it over. And let's see what the play call is going to be on this fourth down. And now Demikoff with time, drops back, looks to pass, and he completes the pass the to Mongelli. Does not get the first but down. unable to get the first down. First It'll be a turnover on downs with about a minute to go in the first half. Now Polaris hands it off on the carry there. Jones it's Jones. The ball out to the 20 yard line. Clock is still running. The Comets still do have all three timeouts left. They're looking to get a playoff here. Four receivers out. And now Polaris with time. And he's taken down by Emmanuel Denkwa. Nice sack there. It'll be third and long. And a great job by Emmanuel Denkwa, able to shed the blocking from the offensive line. We saw before when he tackled number seven, Aiden Jones, for, for the loss of yards. And here with the sack, a great job, able to get through them. Very fast player, Wayne able to Hills put the pressure on Polaris. One remaining in the half. And that sack, just an amazing way to uh, you know keep this energy alive for the Wayne Hills defense. So Hills called a timeout there. 
to talk things over. So now, 24 seconds on the clock with a third and long. And Polaris is taken down. The run goes nowhere on. Well short of the line of scrimmage. Final time out. Down at the five and the Patriots have used up their, all three of their timeouts. They just caught their final one. And now after talking it over, both teams back out on the field. And they'll just punt it away. It'll be down at the 30-yard line the 30 after the bounce, where and with seven the clock stops. But let's, let's see if the offense will decide to take a quick shot at the end zone and see what happens. It does seem as though uh, Coach Zemikov's timeouts have led up to this moment right here. Only seven seconds left in the first half, but... Wayne Hill is looking for one more shot to score. I mean, calling a couple timeouts with time running out on the defensive end, kind of unorthodox, but looks like Demikov had a plan all along, and that plan is to attempt to get one last score in before the half ends. Yeah, possibly, possibly they can get two plays in if they go a quick sideline play. We'll see if they decide to do that or if they're just going to go straight to the end zone. Motion in the back. And a trick play. Back and forth between Gray and Demikoff. And Demikoff is met and taken down as time expires in the first half. The pass back to well, Demikoff. that is going to wrap it up for the first half here half-time. at Hackensack High School. Score, Wayne, Wayne Hill's, Hill's 14, up 14 nothing. Zero. We will be back for second half action and first half recap. But first... As you know, we are here at in Hackensack playing at Tom Delatour Field. And back in 1999, when our teacher, Mr. Hookstraight, worked at Cablevision, he produced a tribute video to the whole Hackensack coach. Let's take a look. As you know, it was about three weeks ago, the news came down for many people in the North Jersey sports community like a ton of bricks. The death of Tom Delatour. 50 years, Tom Delatour involved in high school athletics, recreation athletics, just everything under the sun at Hackensack High School. Tom Delatour was the ultimate comment. We had an outpouring of emotion about Tom Delatour and the impact he had on others. So Damian Riley saddled up the spotlight crew for some thoughts and some feelings on the great comment. Tom Delatour. For over 50 years, Tommy Delatour was a fixture in Hackensack scholastic sports. Not only was he a successful coach, but he was a mentor and father figure to many who played for him. He was a winner on and off the field, and every youngster looked forward to playing for Coach Delatour. He was just such a great man uh, to many of us, and especially to me, I think. He was like my second father. And so he had that, he was that kind of uh, figure in Hackensack. When you were 10, 11, 12 years old, if you were a football player, you knew about Coach Delatour because he was always at the recreation 
uh, fields with baseball is involved, etc. Uh, you look forward to the day that you could play for Coach Delacroix. So if you were a kid in Hackensack and you were involved in, in sports at all, in particular football, you certainly knew who Coach Delacroix was. And uh, before long, you know, it became a dream that someday, you know, you'd be playing for him. Uh, that was a real uh, a goal that every young, young man in Hackensack looked forward to. Coach Delator's love for young people was evident in his tireless involvement in not only football, but he was also the head track coach and athletic director of Hackensack High School, recreation director for the towns of Hackensack, Maywood, and Rochelle Park, as well as working for the local YMCA. That was his motivation, was young people. And he always made sure that if he went around to the parks, because that's what he would do, he would drive around to every town, to every park, to make sure that he saw kids, whether they were playing football, playing basketball, playing stickball, playing baseball, pitching horseshoes. And if you didn't have it, he'd go right to his car and get those materials out so you could have them to play with in the park. The man was, was a great man. That's really Coach's life, it was all centered around kids. You know, we were, we were his boys, and you felt that. You know, that's why I said before about being a second father. That's how we looked at all of us. We were his boys. Once you were Coach's boy, you know, you knew if there was anything you needed help with, you just go to Coach, and Coach was there to protect you and help you in every way. But he made all those kids his boys. It seemed as though they were uh, 50 Coach Delators driving around Hackensack. Of course, every place you look, you know, it was Coach Delator somewhere, whether it be in the playground, in the schoolyard, uh, you know, in church or shopping at Packard Bamberger's, wherever. It was Coach Delator. From 1946 to 1967, Coach Delator not only left his mark on the gridiron in leading Hackensack High School to eight Group 4 sectional championships and 10 NNJIL titles, but also left his mark in the hearts of his players. The greatest impact he had on us was to teach us how to care for the people who came up behind us. Never to forget your town, your school, your community, and, and the kids who followed you. Just like uh, the kids ahead of us were our role models, we became role models for the people behind us. And that was as a result of his tutelage. I wasn't the smartest guy in the class, in my senior class. Um, I had to take a math class. I took a math class under coach and he would make sure that my work was done, made sure I'd see all my other teachers if I was having a problem, but he was more concerned about you being an a, a stu, um, academics, worrying about more about your academics than football. On Wednesday, November 17th, hundreds of people, which included former players, students, and faculty who knew Coach Delator and those who didn't know him, turned out to pay their final respects to a true coaching legend and a beloved human being. I know when I first started coaching, uh, and still today, a lot of the sayings, the little mannerisms, you, you try to emulate him, and you really don't never can, but you try, because you know it was successful, you know how he touched your life, and much far greater than just being a football player. He touched your life, and you hope that you could touch someone else the same way, but the reality is, you never really will. I've never met anyone in my lifetime who has ever, who has ever touched more people in a positive way than, than Coach did. The reason I'm a coach today is because I wanted to be just like Coach Delacour. And, and he was my professional role model. Other than my own two parents, no one has had a greater influence over my life than he had. He used to say it all the time, if, uh, if there are 10 kids that people have given up on, and you don't give up on those 10 kids. There is the possibility that you may save two or three of them, but the alternative would be you wouldn't save any of them if you did nothing. And now welcome back to Wayne Hills High School where the Hackensack Comets are playing your Wayne Hills Patriots. Again, Noah Sandler alongside Jason Hook here with you tonight. So, Jason, what are your thoughts on that first half? I mean, a great, great job on the offensive end by the Wayne Hills Patriots. You know, especially in the rushing game, Tyler Demikoff with a couple keepers. Then you got John Sees and Johnny Mongelli, kind of like Batman and Robin there, you know, working off each other. Great job on the rushing game. And something I want to point out, um, on that last play of the first half, a little bit of a trick play there. 
Uh, you know, the handoff to Makai Gray. He threw it right back to Tyler Demikoff. For you longtime Buenos Patriots fans, you may have recognized that play. Back in 2016 uh, at MetLife Stadium, Wayne Hills versus Wayne Valley, Brendan Devera and Hunter Hayek ran that same exact play. Very big play for the third down conversion that led to a very big touchdown, which ended up winning them the state championship. So good to see that that play has kind of stayed in their playbook all these years, and it's kind of cool to see that. I re-watched that video just earlier today, and now seeing them running here is kind of deja vu. Oh, I thought you remembered that from back in 2016. I was nine years old, Noah. I do not remember that. All right. In any event, it will be Hills to start with the ball. Sees and Mangelli back to return. And now the second half is underway. It is a... Short kick and covered and fumbled. So fumble on that first play of the first half, and now they're going to discuss this, but I believe it may have been recovered by Hackensack. Now it looks like the referees are deciding whether or not it was a fumble recovery or if a Wayne Hills player did have his knees on the ground with the ball. Very good way to start off with that onside kick from Hackensack, forcing the fumble. Possibly was down, but it looks like the refs are still deciding on what the ruling on that call was. Yeah, that was Justin Wojciechowski uh, who made contact with that ball and attempted to cover it. And we'll see if they'll see how they'll rule that. It'll be Wayne Hill's ball. There is an inadvertent whistle on the play. There will be a re-kick. Oh, it'll be a re-kick. So again, back to return is gonna be Cesar Mangelli, round two. And in my many, many years of announcing, three to be exact, I have never seen a re-kick in a football game. Pretty interesting, they are gonna keep the clock at 11 minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. They're not gonna put those 10 seconds back on the clock. Never mind. Those 10 seconds have just been added back, so it'll basically be like a redo of everything that just happened in the last minute. So now on the take two, the Another low kick picked up by Wojciechowski, and kick is that time, that time it's covered. He knew what he was doing on that play after that, that experience that just happened. Yeah, Justin Wojciechowski able to, you know, learn from his mistake early on, takes the knee right as he was going. Wayne Hills Patriots were in a bit of an onside recovery, you know, preparation after they saw it the first time and they were able to be prepared for that kick. And now Demikoff and the offense back out there, three receivers to the left, one to the right. And now Demikoff looks to pass with pressure and he completes the pass to number seven, Guy Giordano for the first down. Pass completed to Giordano, first down Wayne Hills. Great job by Guy Giordano. Uh, possibly first falling, I believe I saw when he was making that catch. Able to get that recovery and a great way to get the first down and a great way to start off the drive. Yeah, and he was also able to kind of catch and get some more yards on that play before being taken down. First down. This ball is handed off to Seas. Seas out to the left. And Seas will be knocked out of bounds just short Seize of the, the first down. down. That was Efrafa to knock him out. Second and two. So it'll bring up a second and two. Yeah, 
Now that ball handed off. And they're going to rule it to be just short of that first down. It'll be third and inches. It was seized on the carry there. So now we're on third and one. This ball is handed off to Seize, who's able to get the first down. Was down at the 30 yard line. Seize down to the 30, first down, Wayne Hills. Now first and 10, ball at the 30. Sees in the backfield, but Demikoff will look to pass, a high pass. Completed to Adam Kachani for the touchdown. A nice pass there from Demikoff the to Kachani. What a play there. And what a season Adam Kachani is having so far. Another touchdown, I believe that is three on the season now, and the third touchdown for the Wayne Hills Patriots, Kachani doing a great job. Three touchdowns on the season, interception, all while being the place kicker for this team. He's gonna take his own PAT. Great job in just his first year as a member of this Wayne Hills Patriots football team. Yeah, I mean, as we talk about every week, so this is his first year on the team. He played soccer for his first three years, and he decided, you know what, I'm going to join the football team just as the kicker and look at the impact he's making on both offense, defense, and special teams. And the extra, and point, the is extra point is good. After that 30-yard touchdown pass from Adam Tyler Demikoff to Adam Kachani, we have a 21-0 game. And what a great job by that Wayne Hills Patriots offense. You know, they usually like to run that, uh, you know, that rushing plays. You saw John Sees with a couple of rushes, able to get that first down. But a couple passes in there too, starting off the drive with the throw to Guy Giordano, able to get the first down to start off. And then Adam Kachani was just wide open in the end zone. Demikoff with a 30 plus yard passing touchdown. An amazing job from both players, Demikoff and Kachani, on the connection. Yeah, I mean, that was a perfectly placed ball right into the end zone over the defender, and Kachani was able to reel it in. Now back to return, we're going to see Afrifa as well as Jones, and it'll be Adam Kachani on the kick. And a line drive of a kick. And drop there by Jones, but able to pick it up. And he's able to roll out to the left. And he's able to keep it in bounds. And he'll run all the way to the 45 yard line where he is finally taken down. Jones gets the ball out to the 45. Good run down the sideline. And the Comets will start their first drive of the second half. On their own, 45. So Hackensack with the ball at the 45 yard line. It'll be a first down. After that early touchdown by Kachani. This ball is handed off. That was Jones on the carry. Jones up the middle for two. And 
It'll be second down and seven. Ball handed off to Jones again. Jones able to find a hold in the defensive line all the way through the middle. And he's tripped up and taken down by Giordano. That is good for the first down and more down at the 40 yard line. First and 10. This ball is handed off again to Jones, but Jones is met Jones by the defensive the line, ball. gain of only two on that play. Second and eight. Now, Plores rolls out to the left. He's being chased by players in white, but not before he's able to take it all the way for a gain of eight. Quarterback keeper. And they're going to move the chains. And that is Plores a first down, first down for the Comets. First and 10 Comets on the 30 yard line, heading in. And a lot of rushing from the Hackensack Comets. Polaris on the keeper. Aiden Jones with a couple of rushes, uh, you know, here and there, able to utilize that rushing plays, and you know, they're able to get that first down there. And now that ball handed off again to Jones, and Jones is taken down by Makai Gray, but a nice run there on that play for another first down. Another run, another comet. First down, their third on the drive. They're on the 20. We'll call it first and 10 on the 19 yard line. Ball placed at the 19, first down. And now Polaris hands that ball off to Jones. And with some help from his offensive lineman, he's able to get a gain of six on that play. Jones fights forward for four. Second down and five. Now bobbled snap. So Polaris is gonna have to take it for himself. And with the stiff arm, but he's out of bounds for a loss of five on that play. That's a loss of four. So that'll bring It'll up third and, third and 10, kind of undoing the work that was done by Jones on that on the play prior. So now third and 10, a big play here for the Comets, down 21 nothing, looking to get some action going. And now Polaris drops back, looks to pass, and incomplete. On third and 10, the pass is incomplete. Covered there by Adam Kachani, who bring up fourth and 10. Fourth and 10.
Going forward on fourth down here. Two receivers out, one left, one right. And now Polaris drops back, looks to pass, feeling the pressure with some time. A high pass and well over the head of the receiver in the end zone. That pass intended for that Eric Afrafa. But in any and event, Guy Giordano would have likely been there to break that up if it was a lower pass. And a turnover on downs there from the Hackensack comments. Very unfortunate, very risky play to go for it on fourth and ten. You know, pass was just a bit high, a little bit lower, and it would have been right in the hands of the receiver. Very unfortunate for the comments. And now Wayne Hills are on their own 19, but they do have the ball. Yeah, down by three possessions. You kind of you kind of you kind of think you have to go for it on that fourth down. <coughs> Looking to get some points on the board, but unable to convert there. Turnover on downs, and as this ball is now handed off to Mongelli. Short gain on that play. It'll be second and seven. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. This ball handed off to Mongelli again. Mongelli looking for an open hole, but found by the defensive line. Only a gain of one on that play. Ball carried by Mongelli. About five and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Third and five. Now Demikoff drops back, has some time. Looking for an open hole, but he's taken down short of the first down. The offensive line there bought him plenty of time, but unable to find an open receiver downfield. Figures at the bottom of the pile there with a big tackle for the Comets to bring up fourth down It'll bring for up, Wayne Hills. It'll bring up a fourth down. And the punting team comes on with the punt unit out on the field. Short punt there. And they're gonna let it roll to the 41 where Polaris and the offense will have the ball. So with 4.09 to go in the third quarter, Comets down 21 nothing. They have it first and 10 on their own 41. And now Polaris hands that ball off to Jones. But he is taken down after he gets a gain of three on that play. Gain of three, second and seven. It'll be second and seven with just under four minutes to go in the third quarter. And now Polaris rolls out to the right. He will take it on the keeper. Good for the first down and more, where he's finally met and taken down by Guy Giordano, but there is a flag down on, on the play. And it looks like it will be coming back. It was holding on the offense, so that'll erase that nice play there by Polaris. Polaris once again utilizing that keeper, the QB run, able to get the first down unfortunately is called back he has been using those QB runs quite a bit so far this game and he's been successful on pretty much every single time he's used it unfortunately they do lose yardage on that holding call 
So it will be a replay of that second down, but it'll be second and eight. Motion in the back. Flores will have it on the keeper again. Looked like it was a similar designed play, but not enough for the first down that time. It'll bring up a third down. Gain of seven. We'll call it five, actually. They moved it back a little bit. Third and three. It'll be third and three. With two and a half to go in the third. There's an injured player for the Comets. That is Adam Aziz, number 10, the senior. Look like, looks like he's kind of holding on to his shoulder. Not, not quite sure what happened on that play. Excuse me, that was actually number 16. Oh, that was Polaris, the quarterback. So now backup, now the backup quarterback will be in. The medical team checking out Polaris on the sideline. Hopefully he's okay. Now on third down. And flags come flying in. Multiple flags. And it looks like that'll be coming back yet again. It was a false start on the offense. It's a five yard penalty against Hackensack on a move him back to third and eight. So now third down and eight. A high snap and quickly taken down. The backup quarterback is Adrian King and he was quickly met and taken down. Comments will send and down once again, team. Emmanuel Dequa with his second sack of the game. Amazing play, job. Snap. He's been doing so well getting these tackles for losses, breaking through that offensive line and just, you know, it's the home stretch from there very quick player on that defensive line and the sacks just come easy for him. Now less than a minute to go in this third quarter. Hackensack forced to punt. It was a low snap on the fake. Taken by Afrafa and he will take it for the first down and more. He's going to break loose and make it to the 20 and to the 10 all the way for the touchdown for the Hackensack Comets. That was Eric Afrafa, a 62-yard fake on that play. Flag was thrown. But looks like that will be a good touchdown as the refs are still talking it over. Yeah, the refs are deciding we're not so sure up here what the flag was, but Eric Afrifa, amazing job on the fake punt, runs it in for the touchdown. A 
Let's see what they're going to call this. It does seem like that flag is against Hackensack here. There's a lot of arguing from the Hackensack sideline with the referees. It's a sideline warning against Hackensack, but the touchdown counts. So it will be a good touchdown. Yards from Erica Freefa. But it was a sideline warning, is what they're going to call it. Now there seems to be even more confusion as Coach Wrestler will come out on the Time field. And a timeout was called. But that touchdown will be good. Just now, just awaiting that extra point. And I think everybody here thought there was a flag on the play. He did throw the flag, uh, you know, only for a sideline warning. We all expected here that either the touchdown was going to be called back or it was against Wayne Hills, but a sideline warning only. Hackensack luckily going to keep that touchdown for them. Erica Frifa, amazing job once again on the fake punt. Took him for himself and 62 yards on the carry. Very impressive job. And, you know, they are cutting it closer to this Wayne Hills team. Now down just 21-6 to with a chance to make it 21-7. to I mean, and that was just as the time was winding down in this third quarter with only 24 seconds. Now out for the extra point will be Joseph Lopez, first opportunity of the game. And that extra point extra is point good. good. Would have been extra good from 30. Extra point, no good. No oh, good. they're going to call it no good. Looked like that was three through their uprights. It had the distance for sure, but it must have been just wide. Now there's some confusion over if it was good or no good. But it is no good. I mean, it was definitely questionable from the bleachers. The scoreboard says it was good. They changed the score to seven, but the public address announcer does say that it was no good, so. It appears they will be bringing the PAT back, so we are correct. The PAT was unfortunately no good for the Hackensack Comets. 24 seconds to go in the third, 21-6. So it looks like they're going to be watching for the onside kick here on this play. And that kick goes out of bounds at the 36, which is where Demikoff and the offense will get the ball. Kick off out of bounds. There was a flag down on the field. Oh, actually, it's just some confusion over where it went out. And it looks like, yes, there actually will be a penalty that will be enforced, and the offense will get the ball at the 44-yard line. First and 10, ball at the 44. 
Now that ball handed off to John Sees, but he's quickly met and taken down by Jason by Zambrano. Game two, second down and eight. And that is going to do it for the third quarter. Your Wayne Hills Patriots with a 21 to six lead over the Hackensack Comets. And the Hackensack Comets able to score in this third quarter, going a little bit closer. They're still down by 15, however. Wayne Hills on that last play, a short run to John Sees. Wasn't looking for a lot of yards on the carry. They were just looking to run out those last 24 seconds, start off with a new fresh quarter, and shift to the other side of the field. Yeah, so Hills is just gonna be looking to kind of run the clock as much as they can and look to put this, this game away. So if Hackensack does want a chance, they would need two touchdowns. One of them would need to have the two-point conversion as well to make up for that. Uh, missed extra point uh, just a few minutes ago. And now to start the fourth quarter. That ball handed off to C. C's out to the right, finding an open lane, and he'll make it to the 40 and to the 30 and to the 20 and to the 10, all the way to the end zone. There's a flag on the play. Where he is going to be called just down, but there was a flag down on the field. Looks holding like against Wayne Hills. it will be coming back. It was holding against the Patriots after Seas was able to break free on that play. And John Seas, once he gets past that first defensive player, once he's able to break that first tackle, he just takes off. Unfortunately, it is called back after the holding call, but I mean, even after him not scoring, you still saw the wheels on John Seas' feet as he's able to run past. Hopefully they can get something else going here as they are pushed back. Second and 15. So it'll be second and 15, ball placed at the 39 yard line. And the defense jumped. It will be offsides. Five yard, five yard penalty on that play. And Wayne Hills, unfortunately, with that holding call, did get sent 10 five yards yard back. They do get those five yards back. out of the 10 right back after that false start call. So they are within uh, second and 10 here. So. You know, not as bad as it was before after the holding call. So it'll now be second and 10 with two receivers out left. But this time it's passed, handed off to Mongelli, and Mongelli able to break free. And he Mangeli is knocked out of bounds by Afrifa the at the 30 yard line. A nice run there by the sophomore, Johnny Mongelli. Moncelli, very good at breaking those tackles. First down, we saw it a lot last year. John C is really the speedster. And last year we saw running back senior Ben Cantella was a great player when it came to breaking tackles. So, you know, very similar. Once Ben Cantella leaves, Johnny Moncelli comes right in. Also amazing at breaking tackles. So now first and 10. This ball handed off to Seas. Seas looking to break loose, and he's finally taken down, but it was a nice gain on that play of six yards. Now on second and five, ball handed off to Seas again, but 
She's quickly taken down by Giovanni Mora, the sophomore. She's chased down by Mora. A nice tackle there by yard. Mora. Lost third a yard on that six. play. It'll bring up a third down opportunity. A couple substitutions will be made. Thanquan, Giordano coming in. And the other receivers include Gray. And Shim. And now Demikoff with time looks to pass, completes the pass to Makai Gray for the first down. A nice reception there and that for, is enough for, a Wayne Hill. for the first, first down, down and more. About a 10 yard reception there on that play into the red zone for the Patriots. First down. And Makai Gray, once he got that catch, off to the races, using that footwork, able to juke out a defender or two. And that diving play, able to reach out for that first down. A great job on Makai Gray, able to use his quick feet to get that first. Now on first down. That ball handed off the seas. Seas finds an open lane. And he's being chased down. There's a flag on the field. Two flags fly in. And he's taken down at the five yard line. Awaiting the call from the referee. It will be holding against the offense. Just under nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So it'll be first and 13, that play is essentially erased. Now this ball handed off. Another flag is gonna fly in. That was C's on the carry. It will be holding against the offense yet again. Another five, it'll be a 10 yard penalty. So it'll be first and long now. It'll be first down and 16. Now Demikoff hands this ball off to John Sees who goes out to the right. Another flag comes flying in. Looked point. like Sees was knocked out of bounds just short of that first down. It was holding against the offense again. Another 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Very unfortunate for this Wayne Hills offense, a trilogy of holding calls for them, pushing them back much further away from their starting point. Very unfortunate, they, they were in great position after that John C's run where he almost scored the touchdown. And now pushing them back to about the 21. But it is gonna be yet another first down. Ball handed off again. Here is Mongelli on the carry. Met past the line of scrimmage. Only able to gain of get a gain of two on that play. It'll bring up second down and long. And while these penalties may not be great in terms of yardage, it's kind of chewing up the clock, which is something that the Patriots 
are looking to do as well and prevent Hackensack from, any, from having any shot of scoring again. But it would still be a two possession game plus a two point conversion. Flag comes flying in. Another one. And it'll be coming back. The false start penalty against Wayne Hills. It'll be a false start this time around. Penalty after penalty after penalty for this Hills team. And there's an injured player down on the field for the Comets. That is number three, Geo Blake, the senior. But he's able to walk off along with the trainer. So now the Hills offense with the ball, it'll be second and long, ball placed at the 25. Four receivers out there for Hills. This ball handed off to Mongelli and he's taken down. Now it'll finally be a third down after all of that. Again, the clock is really just chewing up here, which is exactly what, the, what Hills wants to do. And now third down, Demikoff with time, looks to pass, a high pass, intercepted. Pass intended there for Makai Gray. And that was intercepted at the one yard line by Anthony LaFace. Definitely an impressive interception, just got that one hand on it over Makai Gray, able to bring it into himself. However, at the one yard line, Hackensack is in a rough place. If he was only a few feet back, he would have gotten the touchback there. It would have been at the 20, but unfortunately, starting at their own one yard line is not an easy feat to conquer. All right. Ball at the one. Let's see what they're going to decide to do. Able to get a nice gain on that play. It was Jones on that carry. It'll be second and five now. Just over five minutes to go in the fourth. Hackensack looking to work quickly as a flag comes flying in. It is going to be a false start against the offense. False start against Hackensack. And the clock will just keep winding down. So it'll now be second and eight after that penalty. This ball handed off and met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. That was Jones on the carry. Third and long. That 
It'll now be third and seven. Actually, it'll be six. And now looking to pass, a high pass. Caught by Afrafa. And he's down at the 46 yard line. Afrifa on that reception. Covered there by Kachani, but unable to break that pass up. Great catch by Eric Afrifa. Another great play by him, a 40 plus yard reception. And after that 62-yard rush he had for the touchdown earlier, he's having a great game for himself. Now Hackensack looking to work quickly. First down, looks to pass again. Pelores, a high pass. And over the head of two Passes receivers, incomplete. incomplete. 311 to go. It's good to see that Polaris is back in this game after taking a hard hit before and having to come out for a few plays. Now second down, second and 10. Now Polaris looks to pass again, feeling the pressure, rolls out to the left, completes the pass to Afrifa, and he's down. Pass is complete. That will be good for Afrifa. the first down. First down to the Wayne Hills 42. Clock will stop on that play. Just over three minutes to go. Now Polaris drops back to pass again. Escaping the coverage. And pass is broken up there by Guy Giordano. Pass is incomplete. And there's an injured player on the field for Hackensack. That'll be number nine, Giovanni Mora. Training staff will have to come out on the field to check him out. And that was a rough collision he had with Guy Giordano. It looks like he did get the leg. When he jumped up, Giordano kind of went in for the stop, hit him, it looks like in his knee. So definitely a tough spot to get hit in and training staff's doing what they can and way too many injuries that we've seen in this game, a lot from Hackensack. You know, I believe that's the fourth player who's gone down with an injury for this Comets team. And we've also had one from our Wind Hills Patriots. So very unfortunate to see these many injuries on the field today. And he's going to be able to walk off under his own power, which is great to see. I mean, Morris had a pretty solid game, had some nice receptions at wide receiver. And he's also made an impact on defense as well. So it'll now be second and 10. Four receivers out, one to the left, three to the right. Now rolling out to the right, a high pass out of bounds. Polaris was feeling that pressure dead. from Denqua. As well as Darian Kim. And Denqua's been putting the pressure on this Comets offense all night long. He's got two sacks on the game. He's got a couple tackles for losses. And every time, it seems like every time he's blitzing that offense, he's able to get through that offensive line easily. A great pass rusher, a great uh, you know, rushing player just in general, doing a great job. And one of the main reasons he was able to force that incompletion.
Now third and 10. That ball is handed off to Jones. Jones looking for an open lane and he's tripped up and taken Jones down by Mongelli. Inside the 30 yard line at the 27. Clock is running less than two and a half minutes. First down, some motion in the back. Flag will be thrown, and it'll be a false start against the offense. False start against Hackensack. Clock is winding down now, less than two minutes. It'll be first and 15. And now Polaris completes the pass to Afrofa able to break free and he's tripped up and taken down at the five. Erica Frifa had a nearly open lane to the end zone. Mongelli able to get the tackle last second. Gets the leg, trips him up right before he can score. First and goal for the Hackensack Comets, but a great tackle by Johnny Mongelli stopping a score. There's definitely enough time here for Hagensack to possibly score. And maybe if they get the onside kick here, they could score again. It definitely could end up being a close game here. Let's hope not, Jason. That, would, that really would be the worst case scenario, to hold on to the lead for this long and then with less than a minute and a half to give it all up. That would be brutal for this team. I hope not either, but you know anything can happen. So now, first down, first and goal, well inside the red zone, ball placed at the nine. Excuse me, it'll be more like the five. A late substitution. And now Polaris drops back to pass, a high pass. Completed to Efrifra. And it will be a touchdown for the Hackensack Comets. A late touchdown for Hackensack. Efrifra has been all over this second half, and that was a, a dime of a pass from Matt Poloris. And it looked like Adam Kanchani, the defensive back, Thought he did catch it out of bounds. Didn't think he was in bounds. Kachani was not able to turn around in time to attempt to get the interception. Thought he was out of bounds. Call was in bounds. Just barely did get one foot in. And a great touchdown for the Hackensack Comets. And they are going to go for the extra point here. And it is extra up and good, good. Go. with 124. So Hackensack will be going for the onside kick here in this game. They're looking to get another eight points, and that can be done through a touchdown and the two-point conversion. So if this Hackensack offense wants to make an attempt to win this game. They're going to have to get the onside kick and then work fast. Yeah, and they've definitely come into this second half looking like a very different team, especially in this fourth quarter. I mean, you know, they did score in the third quarter, but so far in this last quarter of the game, they have been very aggressive on the offensive end. 
Yeah, their only points came in the fourth quarter on that touchdown where the extra point was no good. So down eight in this game. So going for the onsides kick here. Flag is thrown. On the kicking team. Too many men on the field against Hackensack. It'll be a too many men on the field. Five yard penalty. So they will be kicking from five yards back. And now for the onside's kick. And it will be recovered by Emmanuel Danqua. Wayne Hills recovers the onside kick. Way to maintain possession of that ball and just get down. And they definitely learned from that first onside kick that they did end up dropping. Uh, you know, it was recalled. They did end up redoing the kick. But after that first onside kick that was dropped, you know, they learned their lesson. They're going to get ready for each and every onside kick that comes their way and dropping right to the ground right once they get the ball. You know, able to avoid the tackle, able to avoid a potential fumble there. And Hills in victory formation. Timeout Hackensack, their third and final. A timeout is called by Hackensack just to stop the clock. So Hills will just go in victory formation again. So it was it was, a, it was really a great game from this Hills team, really bouncing back after last week, showing that, showing what kind of team they are. They really did, I really think they did look a lot better this week. I mean, it is a different team that they were playing um, this week, but give some credit to Hackensack. In the second half, they really tried to fight back, um, unable to in the end, uh, but they did score those two touchdowns, one in the third, one in the fourth. I mean, yeah, they have had some tough losses here. I mean, against Ramapo, against Wayne Valley, but those are two very good teams. Agatsak is on that Wayne Hills level, so, you know, they are able to face kind of, you know, a team that's equal to them, and they showed that they are a very skilled roster here. Score, Wayne Hills, yeah, I mean, a great win from Agatsak this Patriots 13. team. They are going to advance to 3-2 and two on the year. Thank so, you for coming out. So really like what we saw from this team. Any final Thomas. thoughts, Jason? We'll see you soon. Well, you know what? We did a great job. Out, they did a great job out there on the offensive end. That rushing game was truly something that we needed to watch. I mean, Johnny Mongelli, John Sees did a great job 
And then on the defensive end, we saw Emmanuel Dankwa put the pressure on the quarterback, Polaris, and he did a great job. Two sacks and a couple of tackle for losses. So offensively and defensively, this looked like a great team. Yeah, well, a really great win for the Patriots to advance them to 3-2 and two on the year. And that is going to wrap things up here at Hackensack High School. Once again, the final score, 21-13 with the Patriots winning. For Jason Hook, I am Noah Sandler, and we will see you next week for an away game at Ridgewood.